Hello, and welcome back to Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion. This week we welcome Ophelia Wibisano from the from University College London to the show discussing the first discovery of X-rays ever seen radiating from the ice giant planet Uranus. But next up, we take a look at the oldest, closest pair of quasars yet seen in the early universe. We'll also look at the pulsar at the core of the Crab Nebula, revealing secrets of these enigmatic bodies. Then, we travel to Mars, examining the first helicopter ever designed to fly on another world as Ingenuity prepares for its first flight on the Red Planet. Quasars are extremely energetic galaxies featuring highly active, supermassive black holes near their center. Radiation pouring out from these bodies can far outshine all the stars in the galaxy in which they reside. Now, astronomers using the Gemini North Observatory in Hawaii as well as the Hubble Space Telescope have recognized the oldest quasar pairs ever seen. These bodies are seen as they approached each other on a collision course 10 billion years ago. Only around one in a thousand quasars are paired up like these objects and each pair would have formed single, even more massive black holes following their collisions. In the year 1054, a supernova was seen from Earth, becoming the third brightest object in the sky. Astronomers studying the Crab Nebula, the remains of this explosion, found the pulsar at the center of the blast is radiating significantly more energy than expected. Now, pulsars can emit beams of energy as they rotate, producing flashes which can sometimes be seen from Earth. Occasionally, pulsars produce outbursts called giant radial pulses which this study found are far more powerful than theoretically predicted. Meanwhile, on Mars, NASA is preparing to fly a helicopter on another planet for the first time. This revolutionary craft, named Ingenuity, arrived on Mars in February along with the Perseverance rover. The first flight, uh, originally scheduled for no earlier than April 11th, has been rescheduled for April 14th or later. If test flights prove successful, uh, other worlds in our solar system, which also have atmospheres, might be explored by similar craft. Join us on the show on April 20th when we'll talk with Joshua Ravitch, uh, NASA's lead mechanical engineer for the Ingenuity helicopter on Mars. We're going to talk with him about the design, testing, and operation of this remarkable little robotic explorer. Looking deep into the universe, we see backwards in time. And the oldest light in the universe holds secrets to how everything around us will, one day, end. Meanwhile, stars, planets, and galaxies dance in an intricate ballet, occasionally giving birth to life. We are a fledgling species, just beginning to visit other worlds. We are a way for the universe to understand itself. The Cosmic Companion strives to bring the universe down to Earth, and we depend on your help to make it happen. For information on subscriptions and ways to donate to this program, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net. Thank you. Next up, we talk with Ophelia Webisano from the from University College London, 
discussing the first ever discovery of x-rays coming from the ice giant planet Uranus. This week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, we're happy to be joined by Ophelia Wipassano. She is a doctoral student at University College London, and she recently participated on a fascinating new uh, study which found x-rays coming from the planet Uranus for the first time. Welcome to the show, Ophelia. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. So tell us just a little bit about these x-rays that you found around Uranus. What what got you to look for them in the first place? Sure. So um, my team and I usually actually work on Jupiter. So my um, research focuses on why and how Jupiter has very bright x-ray aurora. Um, and my supervisor um, back in 2017, he realized that um, a big solar storm was going to hit Uranus um, in November of that year. Um, and we know that the auroras on Jupiter and the Earth and Saturn brighten when those planets get hit by a, by a solar storm. So he hoped um, that Uranus might do the same thing. And uh, he actually started analyzing the data as soon as he got it um, but he he didn't find any any sort of um, statistically significant um, x-rays he detected some x-rays but not enough for us to say yes we definitely found x-rays from Uranus mm -hmm. um, and during the lockdown last year um, he wanted to kind of finish off the study um, he wrote a, a, a draft paper to say we didn't find x-rays um, but uh, there was one other observation uh, of Uranus um, taken by uh, Chandra back in 2002 and he thought I'll take a look at this data set um, just you know if anything to to prove that uh, we, we, we can't see uh, x-rays from Uranus and when he analyzed the data to his amazement he found the x-rays um, so we, we we got to work uh, last year, you know, to, trying to make sure that what we were looking at were actually real. Um, yeah, and then we uh, we we sent the paper off, and uh, it was published just last week. Wow, that's fabulous! Uh, I, first of all, I I love when uh, I love when in science you go to look for one thing, expecting a, and instead this other thing comes up and just sidelines you. You know, I mean, it's just it's just great. So, uh, you know, we've seen x-rays before, as you mentioned, on Jupiter, um, as well as the rocky planets and especially Earth. Um, but can you tell us where it's, what, is, what do we know about the characteristics of the x-rays from Uranus and what makes it alike or different to x-rays we've seen around other worlds? Um, so what we were able to do with the 2002 data was that we could... Um, measure the energies of the x-rays um, so what we know from Jupiter and Saturn the x-rays from those planets tend to be quite low energy they tend to be below one and a half kilo electron volts so that's towards the um, the lower end of what Chandra can detect um, and so we were able to, to get rid of, of the x-rays above that energy because all of all of those x-rays are from background sources so black holes or neutron stars or whatever um, and so when we were looking at very specific um, energies uh, x-rays of very specific energies um, that's when we that's when we found them on on Uranus so in that in that respect the x from Uranus are very similar to the ones we find uh, on uh, Saturn and Jupiter hmm and can you tell us a little bit more, you know, you mentioned um, the solar storms that were predicted to happen, uh, well, that did happen or predicted to hit Uranus. Can you tell us a little bit about how those were found and predicted? 
Yeah, sure. So um, the sun constantly releases a stream of charged particles out into space um, in something called the solar wind. Um, and occasionally you have uh, two of these streams kind of merging towards each other. So if, if the first stream is slower, um, they can um, a faster one beh from behind can overtake it. Um, and that creates um, sort of, you know, I guess well, what, what we call a soil storm. Um, and when we when that reaches a planet uh, with a magnetosphere so a planet that has a global magnetic field it creates this bubble of magnetism around it uh, which protects a planet from you know from the sun's solar wind um, and the solar wind then squashes the planet's uh, planet's magnetosphere um, which then makes the aurora brighten. Um, so we don't have any spacecraft out there in the outer solar system that can monitor um, what the solar wind is doing. We have loads of them um, around the Earth um, because, you know, they help us um, um, in case there's like a huge solar storm um, heading our way. We can, you know, they, they, they pose a danger to astronauts, for example. They can cause havoc to our... Um, power supplies. Um, so what we had to do was we had to take uh, those measurements from around the Earth and propagate them out to where Uranus is. So um, using computer models, we can predict what the solar wind is going to happen uh, at Uranus. Hmm. Um, and the observations from 2002 and from 2017 um, were taken, as I understand, by different instruments aboard Chandra, the high resolution camera and, AC and ACES. Can you say a little bit about the uh, advantages and disadvantages of each instrument and what you're able to gain by, by looking at these different instruments? So um, ACES has or had spec res resolution, so it could measure the energies of the X-rays. Um, unfortunately, over the last few years, um, it has degraded, um, so it's not very sensitive um, at the energies that we um, that we want to know more about. So the the lower end of the um, um, lower energy X-rays, um, which is why we couldn't use AXIS for the later observations. Um, HRC is a, is a high resolution camera, so it's got very good spatial resolution, um, but not good spectral resolution. Hmm. And what other instruments might be up there now or coming in the next few years that could help you do some follow up observations on, on, the, on this phenomenon? It's yeah, um, the European Space Agency has XMM-Newton, um, so it was launched at roughly the same time as Chandra, um, and it has um, uh, um, it has more sensitivity, so it can um, detect more more X-rays. Um, it's also got a very good um, spectral resolution, so um, the, the the it can you know measure the energies of the X-rays uh, much better than than Chandra can. Um, so we're hoping we might get um, some observation time with XMM Newton uh, in the future. Of course, coming up, we've got um, Athena, uh, which is another ESA mission. Um, and I think NASA are, are planning to, to uh, launch another extra observatory called Lynx in the 2030s or so. Hmm. And I find it uh, fascinating how Although we see X-rays from all these different, from most planets in our solar system, they're all produced by different methods. So can you tell us a little bit about um, how the X-rays on Uranus form? How are they developed and how is that different than let's say X-rays around Earth? We believe most of the X-rays we get from Uranus are just um, scattered solar X-rays. So the sun sends out a lot of um, X-rays out into the solar system. Some of them gets reflected uh, of, uh, of Uranus, literally they bounce off the atmosphere uh, of Uranus. So um, Jupiter and Saturn do that too. Um, but what we found was that the X-rays we detected was stronger than, than we expected it to if, mm. if Uranus was just scattering these solar X-rays. 
So one possibility is that uh, Uranus's rings is also fluorescing in, in X-rays. Um, Saturn does that. Um, or it could have um, X-ray auroras, just like Jupiter and uh, and the Earth. So we, we know how the Earth's X-ray aurora are produced. We know how Jupiter's X-ray aurora are produced. We're just not sure how uh, how Uranus does it if it you know if it does have X-ray aurora. All right, and so you uh, you hit on uh, what I find is really intriguing is the extra X-rays. You know, you seem to be seeing more of it than you would get from just reflection, or you know, it could have come from the sun ultimately. Any idea what's causing the what's causing the extra X-rays? I think. By the way, I call this the, the case of the missing X, extra X-rays. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I actually think it could be X-ray aurora because, you know, we know what the solar wind was doing at the time. We know that uh, Uranus was hit by, by that solar storm. Um, and so we we know that uh, Uranus has auroras in other wave bands, so ultraviolet, for example, and the location of the X-rays that we detected are exactly where the aurora should be. So I think that's quite a uh, quite strong evidence that there could be auroral. Hmm. And so what's what's next for you? Are you going to be doing more research on x-rays from Uranus and or and if so how? I really hope so. Um, so we're you know heading towards um, solar maximum now you know we, we've, we've left solar minimum which means the sun will release more x-rays which means that Uranus should be reflecting more solar x-rays so uh, it might be easier for us to detect X-rays um, in the next few years, but then that does make it more difficult to distinguish whether they are, um, you know, solar X-rays or auroral X-rays. Mm. Um, I think we just kind of have to wait and see, um, you know, what the solar wind is doing. If we if we predict another solar storm um, hitting Uranus, then hopefully we can go to um, Chandra or XOM Newton and say please will you let us observe Uranus um, <laughs> because we think this is going to happen. That's that's great. And of course, so far, finally, um, the, um, the only spacecraft to visit Uranus so far is Voyager 2. Um, but if, you know, NASA or ESA or, you know, Roscosmos came to you and said, hey, you know, Ophelia, we, we want to design this craft to to Uranus, what would, what would you want to have on it? Definitely an X-ray detector. Um, we've never had an X-ray detector on a spacecraft in the outer solar system before. Um, it's you know Chandra is is amazing uh, what it can do, um, but we really need to get up close to to Uranus, for example. Um, because, you know, the, if you have a detector right there and then, we can detect more of them, we can uh, more accurately measure the energies, and so we can tell, um, you know, if it's auroral, if it's fluorescence, we can um, even use that information to tell us uh, what Uranus is made of, so, you know, what kind of uh, gases it's made of, um, so definitely an X-ray detector. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on this show. It was wonderful talking with you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. And uh, that was Ophelia Wibisano, doctoral student at University College London. Join us next week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion when we talk with Andrew Fasikas, a uh, National Geographic's night sky guy, talking about his National Geographic Backyard Guide to the Night Sky. And we're also gonna be talking with Joshua Ravish, uh, NASA's lead mechanical engineer for the Ingenuity helicopter on Mars. Great double show. So make sure to watch or listen starting April 20th. Join us each week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion 
as we bring space and astronomy news together with groundbreaking scientists directly to listeners and viewers around the globe. Subscribers to our VIP newsletter see every episode of this show a whole day before the general public. We depend on support from viewers just like you. For ways to help support this program, including VIP subscriptions, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net forward slash support. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and keep your wonder alive. If you enjoyed this episode of Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, please download and share the episode on YouTube, Facebook video, or on any major podcast provider. For more details on space and astronomy news, please visit thecosmiccompanion.com or thecosmiccompanion.net.